Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Damron. We're playing Elder Scrolls Online. The new Flames of Ambition DLC brought us two new four-player dungeons to get through. That Black Drake Villa, which we already dropped the video of, and now we have the Cauldron. And obviously, I'll get the hard modes of these up as well going forward. So if you haven't seen any of my guides before, just to mention, I will keep these as complete playthroughs. I'll fast forward through the ads as we're kind of progressing through the dungeon, but I do keep these as complete playthroughs. These videos focus mainly on boss mechanics, so if there's a particular boss in the dungeon that you're looking for, you're having trouble for, I'll have the bosses time stamped in the description and the comments, so feel free to check that out. And this dungeon, the cauldron, is actually pretty fun, and we'll touch on the lore a bit, little bit here. It, this takes place in western Deshaun, and there's a dark elf village that started to have some of its inhabitants go missing, and they're trying to figure out where where they're going. And also in the mountains of Deshaun, there's a lot of sinister cults that actually reside in that area, and one of them is in a nearby abandoned mine that's close to this village. So the character Drothus comes in here, and he wants your help to help find his uncle and his father, and when you get in here, you're also here with Larenth, and you learn that a uh, one of the leaders of this cult, Baron Zaldris, is actually taking these people and sacrificing them to try to resurrect a Mayrune Dagon shrine and extract that da uh, Daedric power. So Larenth is in there, and she's also looking for a lockbox because she has found that these caves have been taken over by this cult, and she needs your help to require it. So you're kind of in here to shut down this cult as well as rescue the inhabitants of this dark elf village that are being taken by Baron Zaldris. So that brings us to our first boss fight in this dungeon, which is Oxblood the Depraved. And this fight's not really that bad, okay? There's a couple things that you're gonna have to focus on, but overall, this isn't that challenging. You just need to kind of keep the board a little bit, you know, even, and you can take this out no problem. So he does have a pretty monstrous heavy attack that you're seeing here, okay? And that you saw when he kind of slams down. As long as the tank is, you know, taking that damage and blocking that, it should be okay. But that does do a lot of damage, so you definitely don't want any Anybody else to be hit that so you're also noticing all of these you know bile globs and gore blobs that are in the fight as well he will summon them and those bile globs will actually kind of make their way toward him and you actually saw him right there he kind of reaches down and grabs it if the bile globs actually make it to him he kind of you know reaches down and picks them up and actually makes him stronger okay so ideally you don't want the globs to really get to him the same for these gore globs here if he gets close to them he will kind of you know take those and it'll make him a little bit stronger for a period of time now we didn't really realize that in our first run through this but that's actually what's happening so as you kind of learn this fight you you know dps wants to take those down as fast as possible a couple other things that he's going to do um, right there you saw he did the um, charge right there okay that's called the gore rush and he's just gonna rush towards somebody it doesn't really do that much damage but it will knock you down and incapacitate you so ideally um, you know you can just roll dodge out of the way of that it's not too challenging also he'll bend over and fart gas you see he bends over and just farts gas and they're gonna go in three different directions. So it's this kind of circle, circular AOE that moves across the board. And as long as you're not standing directly in it, you should be okay. It doesn't do that much damage as long as you're not in it. Now, one thing about that gore rush that I talked about, when he, he actually, you can interrupt that. So when he starts kind of charging, like, you know, an ability that you can interrupt, anybody on the board can interrupt that and it'll actually prevent him from charging forward. He will also put people into a circular green ball that you've seen probably a couple times. Uh, it'll basically put them into Iron Maiden, and any DPS needs to rescue that character. If they don't rescue them fast enough, it actually will eventually kill them, but you have a decent amount of time. So there, I interrupted that rush right there. The only other thing that he does um, is ex you know summon these explosive anchors that come out of the ground and explode. Again, have your AOE indicators to bright pink, and you should be able to avoid those no problem um, and this fight really shouldn't give you that much that much difficulty as long as you kind of prioritize uh, you know getting out of those large AOEs and not standing in those large AOEs uh, then you really shouldn't have too much difficulty getting through Oxblood all right so let's blast on through the next set of ads and I'll meet you at the next boss
Alright, so our next boss in the dungeon is Taskmaster Vitzia, or Vitzia, I'm not really sure how it's said. Um, but she's not too bad. She's going to have a couple of things that she's going to do that we need to pay attention to. First off is her electric trap discharge, and essentially she's going to put her staff up into the air, and she's going to create four electric traps to be spawned on the map. And you can either do a couple things. You can either avoid them and not really worry about them, you can also hold block and walk into that circle and it will dissipate the electric trap. The other thing is that Drothus is in here and he's supposed to help us out, but honestly he's pretty useless. He will cast a negate ability every once in a while and actually negate those electric circles on the ground. Now another thing that she does that actually killed me right here was she will slam her mace down and she'll create a very large AOE around her and that will stay there for a period of time and it's basically a damage over time ability that just sits there and it's a very large circle and it can do a lot of damage if you're standing in it. I was a little bit hurt and I happened to walk in it for a second and it finished me off. So you need to be weary of this. See how it's expanding out right there. It's very large and again it creates that lightning AOE on the ground so I, as I've mentioned previously in many many of my videos I highly recommend you turn your AOE indicator to bright pink that's gonna help you avoid all of this damage and see all of this damage on the level and this is a good dungeon or a good fight to actually show you how nice that is because we have all of these bright pink circles now at the time of it I didn't realize that you could dissipate them by holding block and walking into them so again you can create many less lightning circles for you Often, before she does that May Slam and before she creates that large AoE, she will also do a chain pull and kind of chain everybody close to her right before she does that. So you saw that here. And again, our tank went down. We had our healer down. Uh, this was kind of an iffy moment right here, but you know we got through it again. We were running through this dungeon uh, with some people we've never played with before. So anyway, there she goes again. She's you know putting all those electric traps on the ground so you can remove those. Now the heavy attack that she does, you know, the tank really needs to maintain her focus and hold block when she does an uppercut. You know, that does a lot of damage, okay? So you have to be wary of that. She'll also summon a lot of Daedra uh, or Dramora during the fight, and they all have different abilities, right? You're gonna have different types of enemies, um, archers, you know, slayers, all kinds of little Dramora type enemies that you need to kind of take out. Now, it's not really necessary that you prioritize them instantaneously, but you do need to take care of them as you can because you can get overwhelmed with them if, you, if you're not paying attention, right? If you just kind of let all those Dramora build up during the fight, then it can start to cause you problems, okay? Another thing that she's going to do is you'll see her charge up, okay? She's going to charge up, and that can be interrupted with either a ranged interrupt or a melee that's up close. That is a one-shot kill if she fires it off. You could roll dodge it if you're, you know, got the timing right, but ideally you want to have someone, either your healer or a mage that has, you know, a crushing shock or a ranged interrupt. And as soon as she starts charging in with that ability that can be interrupted, you interrupt her because if you don't, and that's what you're seeing a lot during this fight, is that we kind of didn't really understand what was happening fully. Um, and a lot of people are going down, you know, when your tank goes down in this fight, that's not good, right? So right there, you see her charging up and then boom, she shoots that lightning strike out. And before she was able to do that, Brian hit her with a ranged crushing shock uh, interrupt. So that is very key, and that's actually what's going to be killing you during this fight is for one shot. All the AoEs, as long as you keep it bright pink, they shouldn't give you too much trouble to be able to avoid them. You want to hope that Draw this kind of negates a little bit more of them than he did for us, uh, but also you can, again, block and walk into them in order to negate them yourself. So if you're in a situation where you have a better tank, then you're not going to have as much difficulty with this fight as we did. You know, it's always hard when your tank is going down, you know, a lot. So you, that makes things a little bit more difficult. And I think I actually go down here at the end. I'm like, oh, let, I'm going to just execute her. Um, and you'll see the other DPS does finally um, finish the boss off, but it takes a minute. So that's really all the stuff that there is for this fight.
it looks chaotic and you know i was making this i was like yeah do i want to run it again and record another one to make it smoother and i was like you know what not really because i want to show you how chaotic this can be if you're not really kind of playing that crowd control getting rid of the ads and dissipating those lightning circles it can actually encompass a lot of the area if you're not paying attention but as long as you kind of do the things that i've told you about and you kind of mitigate all of those ads and mitigate those lightning circles that she's spawning in and hopefully again Again, Drothus will help you out a little bit more than he did us, then this fight isn't too bad. I've run it again since then, and it's not really, you can actually do it a lot smoother than that, right? So, um, but anyway, let's get on to the lava section of this. You know, it brings us back to almost City of Ash 2 a little bit, or Bloodroot Forge. Um, but we're going to progress on a little bit, kill some Kagudi, and I'll meet you at the next boss. Moving up to our next boss, the Molten Guardian. Uh, this fight's probably the easiest fight in the dungeon. I think um, it's not that bad at all. He does have a you know, light attack that he does there that he just kind of swings forward real quick, but it does have like a conical area around it. Um, so you need to be worried of that. Again, you're gonna want a tank that's a, that can survive a little bit better, uh, but his heavy attack, what you saw there, is the lava slam, and it does actually leave a little lava pool behind where he slams down, okay? So um, you want to be able to stand back a little bit from that if you're the tank, but also be close enough to be in melee range to maintain aggro of the main uh, you know, enemy, the Molten Guardian. So if not, he's going to start shooting this magmatic eruption, which you saw there, to show you that. If someone's not close enough, he'll do a magmatic eruption, and that does a ton of damage, and that's actually what killed me. So someone has to be close enough to be in melee range of the Molten Guardian, or he's going to fire off magmatic eruption, and generally that's going to kill you know, a DPS player with that doesn't have as much health. So we, we somehow survived this and we're back to it. Another thing that he's going to do is going to put his arm into the ground and basically create a Molten Blast. And basically it's going to channel an attack that will cause damage to everyone in the group until he's interrupted. So whenever he puts his arm in the ground and you see those, you know, the uh, red lines kind of going in so you know he can be interrupted, you need to interrupt him as soon as possible. He's also going to sub one, you know, some of his fiends, the molten fiends throughout the fight, which are essentially just small, you know, mini versions of himself. And they're going to fire ranged attacks at everybody and essentially do damage. They don't have that much health and the DPS should be able to clean them up pretty quickly. So again, here to see the tank, he's too close to the boss here. So he's standing and after he does his lava slam, he's able to block and survive the heavy attack, but he's not back far enough away from the residual lava pool. And that's what keeps killing him. So you have to be wary of that if you're the tank, because again, if tanks are going down, that's going to make everything much more difficult for everybody else. Also during the fight, um, he will do a fire eruption, okay, and basically what that's going to do is that's going to put fire pools, and they're randomly going to be placed on the map, 
So you just need to kind of stay away from those. Another thing that he'll do right there is essentially a grand slam in which he slams on the ground. It's basically to create a AOE that's along the whole map, okay? And all you need to do is block that. If you block it, it really doesn't do that much damage. So just keep interrupting that channeling ability. And then if you see him start to slam down and create that large AOE on the entire uh, arena, then essentially you just need to hold block. So you want to stay out of the way of our little fire AOEs that he puts on the map. And those are random. And then also the tank, again, stay close enough to maintain melee aggro, but far enough to way to stay out of that lava pool. DPS is going to DPS down the Molten Fiends whenever they spawn. Again, they don't cause a lot of damage, but you certainly want to get them down um, because they won't really stop shooting these fire volleys until you kill them. And any extra damage is kind of annoying, right? So that's really all there is to it. So you clean that up, right? If your tank can understand that, you know, don't get so close that you're standing in that residual lava pool after his lava slam and then don't be far enough away to let him do his magmatic eruption as long as those aren't happening you should be good and you should be able to clean this boss up without too much difficulty the only other thing that i'll mention are the fire eruptions again when he you know shoots these balls of fire out from his chest and creates these fire pools on the platform that you're fighting on those eventually will go away okay there's nothing you can do to get them to go away so you saw them just disappear there so just keep in mind that you know you want to avoid them when they are there but they they will eventually go away um, so you don't just don't pay attention to them it's going to happen it's not anything that you can erupt or prevent you just need to avoid it um, so here that's what's going to happen if you don't block the grand slam it's not going to kill you but you see it kind of knocks me down so if it knocked me down into say a pool of fire or a lava pool or something like that then you could die so again block it and you won't be incapacitated per se so we're going to go ahead and finish this fight off. It's not too bad. Again, once you know you get a little bit better of a tank, it's, things like this aren't going to be as chaotic. Obviously, I'll clean it up for the hard mode playthrough, but you know this fight's not too bad. It shouldn't give you too much trouble. Okay, so the next, you know, sort of boss, not really a boss, is Lyrence Prison. Um, this isn't a boss, there's not a set boss in this fight. It's more like a series of Dremora waves that you have to get through. But you just need to understand what you need to do in order to pass this. And what you're going to see is in the middle, Lyrinth is kind of entrapped in this Daedric prison, right? And around the outside, you're going to see these small orb likes that are have this chain of lightning going to that center orb. Every once in a while, conductive oil is going to be placed on the ground. And what you have to do is basically a player has to pick that conductive oil up, run to a power nodule, and then run up to Lyrinth and create basically a path 
that connects the outside to the center portion. So you're going to see that right here. So there's the conductive oil. You're going to run up to that. You're going to synergize that. And then you need to go to one of these, you know, power modules and then connect that power module to Lawrence Prison. And as soon as the next uh, kind of Daedric fire happens, aka the next, you know, that right there, it will connect that module to the center and destroy those lightning chains that are connecting it. And essentially what you have to do is you have to destroy all of the power modules. And every time that you destroy one, the next wave of Dremora enemies will spawn in. And the, as you progress, so you see more conductive oil spawning right there. As you progress through this fight, the waves get harder and harder. You can actually, you have enough time if the conductive oil is close enough to a module, you can actually, you know, hit two modules at once and then go to the center. That is possible, but just keep in mind, if you do that, you're going to spawn two waves of Dremoras at the same time. So if you want to connect modules to speed this up, I'd recommend doing it in the first couple. The very last few, I would definitely do one at a time because you're going to have some larger ogre enemies. And at the very end, you're going to have essentially a dragon titan, you know, enemy that you're going to have to fight. So if you do want to connect multiple like you saw there, we connected two modules at the same time, do it in the first few waves, okay? So that's really all there is to this fight. Again, it's not really a boss fight, so I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. It's really just waves of ads that you're dealing with in the process of trying to free Lyrinth from this prison that she's imprisoned in. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and blast through. Now, I just will mention that the very last wave uh, will be a Titan. And again, it's not hard. It's not really a boss. There's, you know, you fought many kind of Ashen Titan, Dragon type enemies in this game. So it, it's nothing different. Just maintain aggro with the tank and DPS it down. There's no specific, you know, uh, you know, mechanics that you need to worry about. So let's go ahead and blast through this and I will meet you at the final boss.
beginning and end that we bring about. All right, so we have made it to the final boss of the cauldron, Baron Zaldris. And this fight is not too difficult if you know what to do. Um, you actually can do this quite easily. So obviously, Tank's going to want to maintain DPS. His heavy attack, hammer down, that right there can actually do quite a lot of damage. So Tank, be sure you're blocking that. The main thing about this fight are these kind of little AoEs here that you can synergize and give you the cold flame infusion. Okay, that is the key to this fight is basically synergizing that you're going to get a little bit of a buff and when you have that you can destroy the molten pillars that he leaves on the ground because what happens is he's also creating a uh you know basically an ash vent that's what it's called and it's this large flame that kind of goes around the map okay and if that touches those pillars it's going to blow them up and turn them into a dramora enemy so there's basically two things that can go wrong here you either get hit by that ash event which it instantly kills you or you don't take out these pillars that you see me taking out and if that ash vent then hits those pillars it's going to create a lot of dramora enemies to deal with on the flip side if you are synergizing and killing those uh daedric you know molten pillars yourself it will then spawn cold flame infusion atronox that will help you during the fight they will help take out all of the you know dramora ads that are spawning in and they'll also damage the boss so your main focus in this boss fight is getting this infusion and killing the molten pillars stay on top of that always keep an eye on that and this fight all of a sudden will become very easy now, what he's going to do when he spawns the ash vents is he's going to move in a certain direction. So you can see that ash vent behind us and it's just progressing around the map. You cannot touch that. It will instantly kill you. So essentially, you just have to stay with Baron Zaldris himself and kind of stay out of that ash vent. And you shouldn't really have to worry about that. Also, he's going to do fire eruptions with essentially these flames that erupt from him and it's a large AOE that spawns around him. Again, that's easily avoidable if you just kind of get out of the way. The other thing that you saw is the Galvanic Charge. When he slams his cleave attack in front of him, okay, anybody that's in front of him was going to have this ability. You're gonna have a large AOE ability around you. It's gonna look like lightning almost. All you really need to do is kind of separate from each other. What's gonna kill you from that is if a lot of people are charged with that and you start overlapping abilities. But again, as I mentioned, your main priority are these molten pillars. If you stay on top of this, this fight becomes very easy, very doable, and what's gonna what you're gonna find is what is killing you was not doing this. You're gonna be like, dang there were so many ads but when you start doing this method you can realize there's really not a lot of ads because you've got a ton of cold flame infusion atronox helping you out and you're going to wipe this boss up no problem and then once you get to execute sometimes he'll actually spawn two ash vents one on either side again just make sure you, you may make sure you stay close to him and that really shouldn't give you much much challenge right just kind of stay close and now we're in execute and we can kind of just finish him off and not really have anything to worry about and that's going to wrap it up for all the bosses in the cauldron we're going to execute him down uh, we'll take a look at the weapon set here but i hope you guys found this helpful you know as always feel free to like and subscribe and, you know get involved in this channel it's a fun channel it's grown so much in the past you know year and a half or two since i started it so 
big thanks to all my supporters and thanks to everybody that gets involved in comments and engages with the channel. It makes it so much fun to do this, so I appreciate it uh, big time. So let's check out the monster set that you're going to get uh, from this dungeon which is Baron Saldris's Visage. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of this. You know, we'll see if people use it. But essentially, when you have one, you're going to get Stam, Mag, and Health. And when you have both, you basically get um, stacks, uh, right? You can apply a stack. And when you get three stacks, you get four ultimate. And you get a stack, essentially, every time you apply a status effect to an enemy. So, I don't know. It doesn't really seem that great. But who knows? Maybe people will use it and they'll find a use for it. But that's going to wrap it up, guys. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully, I'll see you around.